is a really special one. Not very many people have a local place that can make something like this for you. That is until today. Or well, you, you're the one who had have to make it, but yeah. <laughs> Media tacos. Now, let's talk about this. There are a lot of ways to make this. But there's a very specific way that I prefer them, which is with the consomme, which is technically not like the consomme that I'm imagining. The consomme I imagine is like clarified in French. You essentially get a rich, sort of slightly thick soup that you then dunk these meaty, rich, fatty, cheesy tacos. But we're not just gonna do tacos. We're gonna make them quesa tacos. It's a quesadilla and a taco. What more, what more could you possibly want? You've seen images of this dish all over the web. It's taking the internet by storm and there's a good reason for it. It's one of my favorite taco dishes of all time, so with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Right, so birria is traditionally served at celebratory occasions, so that goes to show the amount of attention to detail and love that goes into this. Pay close attention. First, we're gonna snag us five ancho chilies, five guajillo chilies, and two chili de arbol. De arbol, if you want me to pronounce it, all right. Take those dried boys, remove their stems, and de-seed them. The original birria is typically made with goat meat, which is lovely, but I decided to opt for beef on this, hence, de re. Derez, derez? You'll need one pound of boneless chuck roast, three large beef short ribs with the bone attached, or one pound of boneless short ribs, and two large slices of oxtail, about one pound as well. See what we're doing, it's, it's even amounts. One pound, one pound, one pound. Season those all generously with salt. In a large pot, add enough oil to coat the bottom, something high heat like canola, and heat over medium high heat until screaming hot. Add your meat in batches and sear about two to three minutes on all sides until you get a nice, beautiful, deep brown crust all over each piece of meat. Repeat with all of your meat, placing it to the side as you work. Look, color is so important here. Please, no gray meat, all right? This isn't gray's anatomy. Now look at that lovely fond on the bottom of the pot. That's what you want. Now discard of any burned oil left in the bottom, add another couple tablespoons of neutral tasting fresh oil, place that back on the medium heat, then add one chopped yellow onion, saute that just until it begins to soften, then add one tablespoon or 12 grams of tomato paste, Cook that down until the paste begins to darken and stick to the pan. Then add eight cloves of sliced garlic, saute until fragrant. Then add two and a half quarts or 2.25 liters of a rich beef stock. Please make your beef stock for this. All right, I'm tired of saying it. It's the heart and soul to so much of the flavor here. Also, uh, you know, maybe get a pot that's big enough because uh, Papa did not, and now he has an extra dish to clean thanks to his negligence. From there, add your dried chilies, then separately get a piece of cheesecloth, and in the center, add one tablespoon or eight grams of black peppercorns, one tablespoon or five grams of toasted coriander, one cinnamon stick, and six bay leaves. Fold all the sides together and tie tightly with cheesecloth, and now you have a little sachet of flavor. Toss that in your stew, bring that up to a light simmer, and cover it with a lid and braise for one hour, stirring occasionally. Once that hour is up, fish out them chilies, then place them in a blender along with a cup or two of your liquid and blend until smooth. You'll get a nice vibrant orange puree. <laughs> Pour that back into your stew, bring it back up to a simmer, then place the lid on and braise for an additional one and a half hours or until your meat is so tender that it jiggles at the mere sight of your lips. Now remove the meat, discard of any bones, and shred the meat and fat together as chunky or as fine as you'd like. I like mine sort of medium fine, you know, some chunks for variants, but mostly nice and thready. Animals fud with its fat. Season your leftover broth with salt, leave it to the side. It's also called consomme, but not to be confused with the clarified French stock known as, well, consomme. Now we're ready to assemble our quesa tacos, but first let me have a brief discussion with you. In order to pay our respects properly, do yourself a favor and get Oaxaca cheese. It is, in my opinion, the best way to enjoy these. You just can't have these without Oaxaca cheese. And be sure to tear it into little threads like this, both for easy melting and some childhood string cheese like nostalgia. Anyway, use the freshest corn tortillas you can find, corn tortilla guide coming soon, I swear. Then dunk your corn tortilla in the broth completely, which should have a vibrant thick layer of reddish orange fat floating on top that'll coat the tortilla nicely. And uh, when dunking, uh, try to be careful when you're holding onto these or else, uh, Place it on a medium cast iron skillet, set over medium heat. Top that with a generous amount of your shredded Oaxaca cheese. Let that cook just until the cheese is nice and melted. A blowtorch helps too. Then on one side of your tortilla, add a generous helping of your braised shredded meat. Drizzle a large spoonful of your consomme onto your meat. Really let it soak it up. Fold your taco over and let it cook for one to three minutes. Flip and toast the other side until both of the sides have been toasted nicely and the cheese is completely melted. Finally, to serve these bad boys, get a small ramekin or bowl, fill it with your broth or, well, consomme. Top with some finely diced sweet onion and rough chopped cilantro, and all that's left to do is get your melty, meaty little man, dunk it in your consomme, and let all of your problems fade away. 
These tacos are coveted by both the culinarian world and the internet for a very good reason. So without further ado, the proper way to eat these is to talk. You want it to be messy, all right? Don't be a little baby. Only a little baby can be a little baby. You ever think about that? Okay, I got Kate to stop talking. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that gets you in the mood, all right. You have the exterior crunch, and yet subtly soft tortilla, soaked the spicy, fatty stew. The meat is ultra tender. The cheese is ultra cheesy. That you know, it's a quesadilla and a taco, quesadilla taco. That's what it is. I'm not gonna claim that this is ultra authentic, traditional. I'm sure that there's gonna be some grandmother that's watching this. It's like, oh my god, this white guy is being white again. All I have to say is, you, if you don't have something like this in your area, this is as close as you might be able to get at home with pretty low effort. That's something to be proud of. I hope that's helpful. Papa love you. But do you want to know what else is voluptuous, juicy, and packed full of meat? B-roll. <laughs> So we made Bidia tacos, well, quesa tacos, technically. This is actually shockingly easy. Yes, there's a, there's wait time for the cooking, but this, this is something that everybody on the planet can make and should make, really, seriously. If you've never had this before and you don't have the chance, you don't have a local place, maybe you live in Canada and there's nowhere, maybe you're like in, I don't know, some like Midwestern state that people forget the name of, but anyway, <laughs> you need to make this. Please take it from me. This is a beautiful thing to make for your family, for yourself. It's enjoyable. It's, it's good times, bro. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Oh, wait, I have to close the camera. What am I doing? Bye.